All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in this part of the exercise, uh, we want to have a look now at a diamond-shaped airfoil. And uh, the diamond-shaped airfoil has a uh, thickness to chord ratio of uh, 0 0.1. And uh, it's going to be exposed to a free stream Mach number of uh, 3. And now we would like to know the same thing as, um, well, we always usually would like to know. We would like to know the uh, first uh, We'd like to know the, the pattern of uh, waves that you can find around this airfoil. Then we're going to use uh, shock expansion theory to determine the pressure coefficients around the airfoil and determine the lift and the drag. And uh, then we're going to do the same thing with uh, linear theory. And we'll do everything uh, one more time on, uh, with an angle of attack of uh, 3 degrees. Okay, let's start with the first part. So first we have now our diamond shape airfoil. Over here, we have here the streamlines. At the moment, there's no angle of attack, so a flow comes from here. And over here, you see the flow is going to be compressed, so you're going to have a shock. And over here, around this ridge, you're going to have an expansion, it's going to expand. It means you're going to have an expansion wave. And then towards the trailing edge, you again have a compression, so you have a trailing edge shock over here. Uh, and on the lower side, because it's symmetrical in this case, you have the same pattern. Okay, now we need to determine now the pressure coefficients. So we call now this region here 1, this region 2, this one 3. <coughs> so first we need to go to region 1. So we have a compression over there. We know our theta. The deflection angle is going to be so if the height, sorry, the, I draw it here, the height h, this is the chord length c, and h over c is going to be 0 0.1. <coughs> so it's about, uh, it's a airfoil with 10% thickness. So theta is going to be then the arc tangents of h over c. That's going to be 5.7 degrees. Okay, we need to now know the um, shock angle from that. What is the shock angle better? So we have theta. We need to know what is better. So we need to have the from the theta beta m diagram. I have that over here. My deflection angle is 5.7 degrees, so that should be somewhere over here. My Mach number 3 is over here, this is this line. So if I now go up this line here, over here can go over there, then you can now determine the, the shock angle. And again, for an exam or something, you don't need to be very accurate uh, if you are just uh, to the next closest uh, <coughs> uh, 5 degrees, that should be sufficient. But uh, to be sure, I would like to compare later on the, the results with linear theory again. So I would like to now choose a better of, uh, or, uh, choose a, the accurate better, and the, the actual better is going to be 23.7 degrees. I'm not going to use that uh, from now on. Okay, so M1N, the normal Mach number is then going to be 
sine beta times m infinity. That's 1.206. You can then determine the pressure jump from uh, my shock relations. P2 over P1 is 1 plus 2 gamma over gamma plus 1. M1n square minus 1. Okay, I put in here the, uh, the normal Mach number, my gamma, and then I'm going to get 1.53. I want to determine my CP again. CP is going to be 2 over gamma m infinity square, P2 over P1. Uh, minus 1. So I can put my 1.53 directly inside here, or I can write that out. This one is 2 over 1.4 times m infinity square. m infinity is uh, 3. So 3 square times 1.53 minus 1. That's going to be 0 0.084. So with that, I have now determined the pressure coefficient on actually both sides because uh, it's symmetric in this case. Okay, now I would like need to know. I need to come over the the expansion over here. I need to use now my shock expansion theory, and uh, for that I would need to know the Mach number upstream of the expansion to determine now the Mach number behind the expansion. So. I need to calculate now M2N from also from shock theory uh, from uh, from shock theory. You're just using then the normal component. So this one's going to be one plus gamma minus one over two M1N square over gamma oops M1N square minus gamma minus 1 over 2. That is, so either you calculate that or you can also use uh, now the um, uh, shock tables in, in the back of the book. Uh, in the back of Anderson book you, you can find also the, um, the, the, the quantities, uh, how these, for example, the Mach number is changing. So the Mach number behind the shock, the normal Mach number is going to be 0 0.838. And then the total Mach number M2 is going to be M2 normal over sine beta minus theta. So just from geometrical consideration, you can get that. Then you can get the Mach number that's 2.714. So a Mach number is lower than the free stream Mach number, of course, because, because it's behind the shock. And but uh, now the Mach number over here helps us to determine what is uh, the flow around this uh, expansion there. Okay, so to get over this expansion, from 2 to 3, my Pannell-Meyer angle M3 is going to be theta plus the Pannell-Meyer angle of M2. So this is 2 times Arcos tangents H over C. Why is it 2 times? Because you see the flow needs to adjust here twice. So from here to power is 5.7 degree. And from here to go back here is 5.7 degree. One more time, 5.7 degree. So the, the expansion here is essentially 2 times 5.7 degree. One time, two times. So this one here is 5.7 degree. And the Pannemeyer angle of 2.7, you can look it up now. Here's my Pannemeyer function, 2.7. So over here, 
Pandemaya angles 43.63 degree for that. <clears throat> uh, sorry, plus 43.6 degree. So, um, so the new of M3 is going to be 11.4 uh, degree plus 43.6. That is going to be then uh, 55 degrees. Exactly. Okay, I need to determine now the Mach number. 55 degrees, the next one, next closest one is over here. That's Mach 3.3. So M3 is going to be 3.3. Okay, so P3 over P2, the change in pressure is going to be then using isentropic relations 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, M2 square over 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2, oops, gamma minus 1 over 2. Um, uh, 3 square. Another thing to the power gamma, gamma minus 1. You put all the values inside here for M2 and M3. We're going to get a value of 0 0.407. So there's a pressure jump from P3 to P2. So the change from here to here. But to calculate my CP, I need to get uh, the the uh, the, the um, relation to the free stream pressure. So P3, sorry, P3 over P infinity is equal P3 over P1. That is P3 over P2 times P2 over P1. That is uh, 0. 407 times 1.53. The total value is going to be 0 0.622. We can now use again that for my pressure coefficient, Cp, is then going to be uh, 2 over gamma m infinity square p3 over uh, p infinity minus 1. That's going to be minus 0.6. So, uh, sorry, 0 0.06. Okay, so I now have to determine the pressure coefficients over here, over here, over here, and over here. Now I can uh, determine the, the drag and the lift coefficient. So let's start with the lift coefficient first. So the lift coefficient now I have a different pressure difference between in this section and in this section. So I need to split that up. So my lift coefficient is going to be maybe I'll plot that one more time over here just to make sure. So So I have here my CP2 lower, CP2 upper, CP3 upper, and CP2, sorry, CP3 lower. So I want to get the lift, so I need to project that on this direction. So I have here C half, and here another C half. So my CL is going to be um, CP2 lower minus CP2 upper times C half. So I'm projecting it just for one half of that section. 
and uh, sorry, but, but one more time, just CL, make it clean, CP to lower minus CP to upper times C half. So that is for the first part, and for the other second part, CP three lower minus CP three upper times C half. And to make a non-dimensional noise, I need to multiply it one more time with one over C. So you see the C is going to fall out, and uh, if you put the CP, you see the CP here and CP uh, lower and upper are identical. So this term is zero, this term is zero, then it's no surprise uh, there's no lift produced with this. For the drag, we go do a similar approach as for the for the lift coefficient. But here now we need to project it now in this direction over here. So for the lift we need to project the, in this direction, we're going to get the lift. If you want to get the drag, we need to do it in this one direction. And we have here h half. We have another h half over here. So your drag coefficient is then going to be so the pressure difference between front and back. So we have here CP uh, 2, sorry, CP 2 uh, upper minus CP 3 upper times H half uh, plus, so it's for the, for the upper side, CP 2 lower minus CP 3 lower times h half and multiply that with 1 over c to make it non-dimensional. And if you put the values inside, you see you have h over c. h over c is 0 0.1. We know that already and we know the cp. Then you can get a value of 0 0.0144. So you get a non-zero drag coefficient and that is uh, quite important to know because all we need to use for to get this drag coefficient, to get this pressure difference, is now our knowledge of uh, gas dynamics. It's only happening in supersonic flows. So it's an additional drag that um, is uh, the predominant drag in supersonic flows, which is uh, the wave drag. All right, so with that, uh, we have already calculated now the um, uh, the lift coefficient and drag coefficient and the pressure coefficients using expansion uh, 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 shock expansion theory. We get to the the second part in in just a moment.